Hopefully by now, most of you know that we have a serious problem with inflation. At its worst, it was 9.1% in June, and fortunately, July blessed us with only 8.5%. However, this subtle downtrend is nothing to celebrate, and it had serious implications for our economy, specifically for the housing market. If you have been trying to buy a house these past couple of months, then I really feel for you. But you might want to watch the rest of today's video because things are about to get a lot more complicated for the housing industry. For those that don't remember, inflation is caused by a shift in the supply and demand curve. If supply falls, prices rise. If demand increases, prices also rise. And if both happen, we start to see a rapid growth in price. What we should also see rising is the amount of likes on today's video. So make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And for those that don't know me, my name's Hayden, and I make financial videos here on YouTube, as well as videos on current events. So guys, by smashing the like button, you're helping the YouTube algorithm and me know that you wanna see more videos like this. But back to what I was saying, the shift in the supply and demand chart can be measured with what we call inflation. And inflation has had a big effect on our housing market. Currently, the US is more than 3 million homes short for would-be home buyers. This was partially caused by all the economic bailout and extremely low interest rates on mortgages, causing a huge uptick in demand for homes and fueling one of the craziest housing markets our generation has ever seen. Let's also not forget about the pandemic-related supply chain problems. All these factors basically caused the supply for housing to drop and the demand for housing to explode through the roof. The price surge for building materials has also added tens of thousands of dollars in cost to the typical house, causing the nationwide median price of a home to hit an all-time high, a record $428,700. This is up nearly 30% from 2020 to 2022, and places like Utah saw their housing market increase by 26.8% in a year. Arizona was up by 28%, and Florida even jumped 30% in a year. With inflation clearly out of control, the feds must act quick to slow its growth by quantitative tightening and raising interest rates. Now I know these are big terms, so let me do my best to explain and simplify what they mean. So quantitative tightening is when the Federal Reserve reduces its supply of monetary reserves in order to tighten its balance sheet, and it does so by simply letting its bonds and other securities it has purchased reach maturity. When this happens, the Treasury Department removes them from its cash balances, and thus the money it has created effectively disappears. And a Fed rate increase can slow the economy by pushing up borrowing rates and raising the annual percentage rate on savings. This specifically affects banks, who then pass it on to consumers like you and I. Unfortunately, this time around, the Feds acted a little too late, and now we have inflation that we haven't seen in over 40 years. Thanks, Feds. After months of waiting, finally, the Feds decided to take action. In the beginning of 2022, Two, they immediately started to raise interest rates and a few months later started to sell off their balance sheet. The problem with doing this though is it does come with a few unsettling drawbacks. When the feds raise the federal funds rate, the goal is to increase the cost of credit throughout the economy. The higher interest rates makes loans more expensive for everyone and those with variable loans end up paying more on their interest payments. This also means those who can't or don't want to afford the higher payments will inevitably postpone whatever it was they wanted to finance. Higher interest interest rates also encourages people to save money to earn higher interest payments, so it does work both ways. All in all, this reduces the supply of money in circulation, which tends to lower inflation and slow down consumer demand. More people would rather save their money when interest rates are high and spend it when it's low. Just like mortgages, more people will take a mortgage when rates are down and less when their rates are up. Now, mortgage rates today are moments away from hitting 6%, and their continued upward momentum shows no sign of of slowing down. Now, the rates for a fixed rate mortgage has surged since the start of 2021, rising almost three full percentage points. The higher borrowing costs were caused by what I said earlier about the Fed's plan to raise interest rates, and now the fallout in the housing market has been immediate. In recent times, there has been less home sales, a decline in first time home buyers, and sudden industry layoffs, hinting that the housing market may soon start to plummet if it hasn't already. The rise in mortgage rates has also affected the home lending sector sector, and JP Morgan Chase is already laying off hundreds of employees and reassigning hundreds more. Industry heavyweight Wells Fargo let go of more than 100 employees in its home lending business following a drop in revenue in its first quarter. And other lenders such as PennyMac, Loan Depot, and Guaranteed Rate have also reduced their workforces. We're even starting to see real estate companies also begin laying off employees. Compass Real Estate Brokerage recently announced a layoff of 10% of its employees, along with a pause on hiring and expansion 
expansion. Redfin Real Estate Brokerage also let go of 8% of its staff. Last year, many new home buyers flooded the market with mortgage rates at only 2.86%. Hundreds of thousands of new people were finally able to qualify for a loan with their salary. However, things that come quickly usually don't last long. And with the rates doubling in less than a year, people that haven't already locked in a mortgage are left with a tough decision, either postpone a house purchase or reduce their budget. The higher loan costs are forcing thousands of people to cut their maximum price ranges significantly. And when rates hovered around 3% at the beginning of the year, a buyer with a $2,500 monthly budget could afford a $517,500 home. That drops to $427,250 with a mortgage at 5.2%. Now imagine when that's up to 6% or up to 8% alone. Imagine what that would do to your budget. Surprisingly, at the same time, some of the hottest housing areas in the market are starting to fall as there are less buyers on the market to purchase. In Phoenix, the number of for sale listings has gone up above 10,000 for the first time since 2020, up from 3,600 at the end of March. Nationwide, about 21% of sellers dropped their asking price during a four week period through June, up from 10% a year earlier and the second highest share on records dating to 2015. There was even a report from Redfin showing that home sale cancellation soared in July to another two year high as buyers retreated from the market. July also saw about 63,000 home purchase agreements called off, equal to 16% of homes that went into contract that month. We're also starting to see construction of new homes begin to suffer as well. Obviously this has to do with inflation on building supplies, but also the lack of new home buyers. Construction fell in July to the slowest pace since early 2021 as single family home construction tumbled. Now high mortgage rates, elevated inflation, and a deteriorating economy are hurting its sales. This has also left builders with a sizable number of unsold properties and half finished homes. Even with the housing market beginning to cool off, it's still extremely overinflated, making it that much harder for the feds to get a grasp on their original problem, which was inflation and which is inflation. Now here's the thing, housing represents about a third of the value of the market basket of goods and services that the Bureau of Labor Statistics uses to track inflation in the consumer price index. This means if housing continues to soar to the upside and doesn't get stopped soon, we're not going to be able to get rid of inflation. Inflation will drop when the housing market starts to cool off as well. You see, this rise in the price of shelter, also known as housing, is what is contributing to the increase in inflation we're seeing this year. So really, like I said before, unless the feds do something about the housing market, inflation isn't going to get much better anytime soon, and there's a good chance it's going to get much worse. And if you don't believe me, then check out what Jerome Powell said. Just a few days ago, August 26th to be exact, Jerome Powell, the chairman of the feds, had a meeting pledging that he and his colleagues will keep raising interest rates until they're confident that inflation is under control. He even acknowledged that higher borrowing costs will likely cause some short-term pain for some families and businesses. He even said that our unemployment may actually grow higher and the economy might take longer to recover, but by not raising interest rates, inflation could continue to get worse, and that outcome would be much, much, much worse than simply raising rates. The consensus now is that the current rise in mortgage rates isn't going away anytime soon, and by the end of 2022, we could see mortgage rates touching almost 7%. We could even see rates go as high as 8.2% by 2025, according to a housing survey released by the New York Federal Reserve. If this actually comes true, it would be the first time the average 30-year rate crossed 8% since 2000, almost 22 years ago. And as you can see on the federal fund's effective rate chart, each time the feds raise rates, it isn't just for a few months. It is done over a few years. So the possibilities of seeing an 8% mortgage rate isn't so taboo. They could very well continue raising rates into 2024. And this alone will be detrimental to the housing market and its potential buyers, forcing thousands of potential home buyers out of the market. Now, I'm not saying the price of the homes will fall, although they can. We'll probably see a dip in some states where they exploded in price, but overall, the market should find a higher bottom than where it was before 2020. And what we'll see is a slowdown in purchasing of houses, and because of that, a slight dip in price. But we could also see more people go into foreclosure if inflation isn't corrected soon. And now for those that can see the bigger picture, a loan on a $400,000 house with a 5% interest rate makes your monthly payment $2,147. But if that interest rate jumps to 7%, that 
a monthly payment then moves up to an additional $514, bringing your new total to $2,661. And if your interest rate goes up again to 8%, your payment would jump again by another 274 bucks, bringing your new total monthly payment to $2,935. So really just a measly 3% increase from let's say 5% mortgage rates to 8% mortgage rates adds an additional $788 to your monthly payment. So honestly, what seems to be the best option is to wait or pause on buying homes. This really gives new home buyers time to save up for a down payment. And it also gives you more time to figure out if you're actually ready to take on the responsibility of home ownership. As you guys know, the housing market is hot right now and you really don't wanna buy something that's in a hot market. Wait for it to cool off. And when we do cool off and interest rates move up, if you're able to afford a bigger down payment, it will be more beneficial because housing prices will be low Lower, even though interest rates are up. So if you can get more house or buy the house outright, they'll get a much better deal than buying it with a low interest rate and a high price. But guys, with that being said, if you disagree with me or have something to say, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to try to respond. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the economy. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.